So I'm Eli, and today we are going to be talking about nuclear fusion. Unlike what most people think, nuclear fusion is quite different from nuclear fusion, they are two opposites. Nuclear fusion is when two atoms come, it's when two atoms separate, you have one atom and it separates into two other atoms. And nuclear fusion, when you have two atoms and you make one atom. That's what nuclear fusion is. And the reason I'm talking about this now and not earlier or later is very recently, at the Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory for nuclear, nuclear fusion in America. They were able to, as the New York Times stated, achieve nuclear fusion breakthrough with a blast of 192 lasers. And this probably doesn't make any sense to you, but that's the whole point and that's why I'm here. But first, I just want to kind of dissect this a little bit. What is a nuclear fusion breakthrough? Anyone have an idea? Didn't they discover something about nuclear fusion? What do you think they discovered? and how to do it efficiently or something? Yep, pretty much. What it means, they got something called positive net output. So they put in this energy, and then they got out more energy. We're going to do that later, and we'll just have all the Q value about that, and we'll figure it out. So nuclear fusion has been theorized before, and people have fused atoms before, but this is the first time that we were able to get positive net output. So we were able to get out more energy than we put into the atoms. All right, so now, oh, I'm gonna kind of explain this from the beginning. I have split it into six sections, or five sections, really, and they're all kind of baby questions, and kind of interesting stuff. The one we're getting into now is by far the most important and the most complicated. So if you have any questions, raise your hand, and I'll explain it. And you don't need to know what any of that means, but I'll explain it. So nuclear fusion, when two atoms come together and they fuse, hence where fusion comes from, and they fuse together to form one atom. And so in this particular specific case, what they're gonna do is they're gonna take two atoms called deuterium and tritium. These are two isotopes of helium. There are a lot of words, or I don't know, there are a lot of complicated words there, so I'm just gonna explain what they mean. Deuterium and tritium are two atoms. And an isotope of an atom means that it's an unstable nucleus of a stable atom. So hydrogen, H, is a stable atom. Not a no gas, but it's, it's an atom. And what deuterium and tritium are is that the nucleus of it is not what a normal hydrogen atom would have. So deuterium has an extra neutron, and tritium has two extra neutrons. So, wait, does anyone have a marker? Uh, no. I have a permanent marker. Oh, that's not ideal. Yeah, no, no, no. It's for the whiteboard, so no worries. Uh, Whatever. But deuterium has a proton and a neutron, and then tritium has two neutrons and a proton, and then one electron around them. And then when, they're, when we're able to fuse these two together, we end up with a normal helium atom and an extra neutron. There are five neutrons and two protons, so two protons, and then, or, yeah, and then three protons, or three neutrons, but yeah, it doesn't really matter. So, but what's really important for this is the masses of these four atoms. So let's get out. The mass of the deuterium is 2.014 units. This is something kind of important, just when you measure atomic mass, you measure it in units, you don't measure it in kilograms or grams, because the way you measure it is quite different from the way that we weigh ourselves, and so we just measure it in units. So deuterium is 2.014 units, tritium is 3.016 units, helium is 4.003 units, and the mass of a neutron is 1.009 units. And so, wait, let me look this up. Does anyone remember last year's class where we learned about the law of conservation of matter? Yes. What was it? It's if you start off with a specific amount of um, atoms, at the end you're going to have the same amount, just in different um, solution structures. Yeah, so it's not quite the same amount of atoms, so it's quite the same weight. Matter cannot be created. Yeah, yeah, matter cannot be created or destroyed, exactly. So mass should stay the same. You're not creating or using mass or matter. But what's so interesting about this, when we take this deuterium and tritium and we, heal, we fuse it into helium and neutron, is we actually end up with less mass. It's quite confusing. I'm gonna come over here. We have this and this, so that's the deuterium and the tritium. 
is bigger than the mass of the helium and the neutron. So far, does everyone understand? Yes. We're good. We're all good? All right. Great. Great. So what happens is we have this deuterium and tritium, which is 5.03 units together, and we have the mass of the helium atom and the extra neutron, which is what we end up with when we take the deuterium and tritium and fuse them together. And we have this 0 0.018 units that are just kind of left over. Where did they go? Where, where did they come from? It's quite confusing. Now, I'm going to connect this to this equation. E equals mc squared. Where, when did you guys learn this and why? Uh, for fun anecdotes. In the test game, like you did a presentation on Einstein. Nice. Yeah, you did the the, the yeah, autobiography the, thing. Uh, when Michael did his class, well, I knew I, I I didn't really exactly know what it meant for, but. So who wants to explain what it means? Go for it. Then. Energy equals is um, mass times light. No, energy of light. Mass times speed, speed of light. Squared. Exactly. So, does anyone know uh, an application of this besides nuclear fusion? We're going to get to nuclear fusion update. No? No worries if you don't. It doesn't matter. But, so what we can do this is we have this extra mass. What we can do with this, we have this extra mass, right? Mass. And mass. Who thinks, who can figure out where I'm going with this? Like, depending on the energy you put in. It's actually kind of the opposite. It's depending on the mass left over, we're going to get energy. So we have the 0 0.18, and with that mass that's no longer there, or that's not no longer there, it, that mass that we don't know what happened to was converted into energy. So we have is we have this helium atom, and we have this neutron, and we have energy. We have a few extra joules of energy which is quite interesting. And that's kind of why it's important, or not why it's important for us, but why it's interesting in a modern day, because energy is something that's very important for us. We need green energy, it's something that's a very co current topic in our society, how to get rid of coal and natural gases. And this is a very, this is a good way of doing it because you're just taking atoms and you're combining them, but very harmless-ish, basically. So that's how it works. Does everyone get how it works? Yeah. Great. Now I'm going to get how they are able to merge these two atoms together. I can't explain it that well. I could, but the video of them actually doing it is going to be more important. There's going to be better video. So I'm it doesn't work. Do you want to maybe copy the no. name of it? I guess I'll explain it then. If you want, to, uh, if you can do a like not the screen. Sure, I tried mine. It's not working. Do you want to do mine? Well, I can do a mine, but then the camera. Oh, okay. It does. It does better. I'll explain it. I'll explain it. No worries. What, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back to that New York Times headline that I started with in the beginning. Scientists at Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory achieve nuclear fusion breakthrough with the blast of 192 lasers. Who has a guess now? They use lasers. <laughs> yes, no. Yeah, exactly. They use lasers. And basically what they have is they have a capsule, a small little capsule, that inside there are a bunch of deuterium and tritium atoms. And what they're going to do, they have a whole process, and that's why I wanted to show you a video, because it's an amazing, intricate thing of taking lasers and making them more powerful and then directing them. Basically what happens, within 50 billionths of a second, what they'll do is they'll take all the lasers, they shine it onto a capsule surrounding the capsule with all the atoms, and basically what it's able to do is it's able to make the atoms implode faster than it can explode. And so all these atoms are forced to come together, and then you end up with these helium and neutrons, these helium atoms and extra neutrons. So just how it works. Maybe I can use just this image 
basically you know, like can't use the, the but all these lasers represented the red kind of come into this big old big big circle that makes the lasers x-ray rays instead of infrared rays which they normally are and then these x-ray rays are going to be able to make the capsule implode within 50 billionths of a second so it has to be really well accurate it has to be really accurate because 50 billionths of a second is no margin for error and all these have to shine at the exact same time otherwise it won't work so quite a lot of pressure for that all right so now there, there's like the two kind of sesh segments that go together why can't we have it now and are we there yet so the, this whole presentation i would need you guys to believe that we got net power output it was on my first slide right here net positive net output i was lucky they did not get positive net output let me go back to this side i wanted to show you there we go we didn't get positive net output what we got is net energy gain. Net energy gain is the just the lasers were producing or used two megajoules of energy, and we were able to get out three point one five megajoules. So the Q value, which is the return that we get, was about one point five. Isn't that one fifteen? It is. Yeah, I think that number is wrong. Actually, I might have mistyped that. I don't remember what it is. But that's not true. If if we use, uh, I saw this one explanation of that it was like we use fifteen guys. If there's one shape that makes all physicists' lives easier, can you guess what it is? Triangle. Triangle. What do you think? Pretty. What do you think? It's, it's that circle thing you do with the microwave. Yeah. It's the. The binary shape. No. No. The 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 circle with the line. Theta. Yeah, that's not theta. Theta. Pretty, do you have a guess? No? Right. Well, it's a circle. It's quite simple. You are close. It was more engineering than triangle, but close enough. A circle, and basically what we're going to do is we're going to take a circle, and we're going to look at the energy in and the energy out in that circle. So if we just have that laser, just the lasers in the circle, energy in is 2, energy out is 3.5-ish, not 3.15. And so that's positive net output in that circle. But what we're going to see is if we zoom out to the scale of the whole building where these lasers are, hit it, are in, that's more than 300 megajoules of power is going into that building, and only got 3 megajoules of power. So that's a 0.01 Q value, which is not at all viable, which is why net energy gain is not equal to a viable solution. But I put here. So what we can say is, sure, these lasers were good, but the whole building is what eventually matters because. You can't just have lasers without having this whole building that is like making them more powerful and actually throwing the lasers themselves. And so really the energy that was used is 200 megajoules, which isn't good enough. But if we zoom out even more and we zoom out into the world, Earth, it's not only 300 megajoules that goes into this, these lasers, but tritium specifically is very hard to come upon in Earth. It's a very rare substance. And so not only do you have to put this energy in to make the lasers, you also have to make tritium, which takes even more energy. You have to find deuterium, which takes energy. You have to make this capsule, and you have to do all this. And so it's really not quite there. And so it's not a viable solution yet, and we're working to make it more viable and more viable, but it's not quite there. Yes, sir? How can it become a viable solution if the difference is so big? Yeah, so in the, um, in the facility in general, the technology is all from the 90s because the whole point of it is to figure out if it's possible and not really to make it a viable solution for consumer electricity. So things have gotten a lot better since then, and so if we're able to like update it, it'll lower, it'll raise this Q value, maybe not to more than one. Uh, like an average guesstimate, uh, guess yeah, is the Q value has to be 15 to 30-ish to make it a viable solution for us. But then also, the energy released is not all the energy that we were able to capture. There's energy from the we're able to capture. So if we are able to make our capturing better and make our technology more efficient, then you might be able to do So now, are we there yet? I don't know. We've all probably had some parents in the LAR car ride, or I just skipped over there. Oh, yeah, I, did, I did the wrong one. There we go. 
Are we there yet? Yeah. No. no. Does someone want to explain to me why you want me to do, me to do my job? Go for it. Well, it is what you just said. That, yeah. 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 So yeah. because uh, because we can't get um, more energy out than we put in, so it's it's not at all possible for us now when it gets to just waste energy. Yeah. yeah. So we're not quite there yet. We're getting there, but we're not there yet. And yeah. Later. It could also, uh, the fact that we can't have access to it yet could be because it, it would, as Lucas said, it would waste energy, but it would also be because, the, as you said, the materials are very hard to come by. So without a structured plan check by actual scientists, it would be a, a really quick waste of materials and then they would become even more scarce. Exactly, yeah. And so there's some estimates that say well, we might be there in like 2040 is like the, the most one of the most optimistic guesses so we're quite far so far we're at like a proof of concept level we know it works now it's been proved we can do it but now I have to make it a viable solution which we're not there yet so no we're not there yet 